Oh no. How about now? Uh oh. Can you hear me now? All right. The, okay. Hey. We're, that was awesome. That we would see. I I was just testing the chat to see if you're really paying attention or right, right. <laughs> if you're cooking dinner or if you're doing some stuff or whatever. So yeah. Um, so one stop shop over here, and I forgot to unmute our mics before we went out. So yeah. <laughs> So there's that. I was so excited. <laughs> we were so excited. Yeah, we told you such really cool stuff when you couldn't hear anything. Uh, right. but, it's all yeah. over. It's all, it's all done. It's yeah. So uh, thank you for hanging out and for putting up with our absolute nonsense, which I'm sure is going to continue uh, for <laughs> for the duration. Uh, but yeah, so um, I'll start with uh, with me actually, because you I didn't do that the first time, so we'll go we'll uh, we'll modify a little bit on this, I guess. So um, so I'm Shannon, uh, the uh, founder of Imagine If Media, and is my goal for this channel to be a space for creators to create, play, and heal, and for us to really bring attention to all of the cool creators that are out there, whether you're an artist, ooh, fun stuff just happened. Uh, whether you're an, uh, an artist, a writer, a gamer, whatever, uh, just, yeah, all that good stuff. So um, our very first creator spotlight is uh, is tonight. I'm so excited. And I have a very special guest. Uh, he's everyone's best friend. And <laughs> I'm going to have him do all the introductions, but it's uh, Stefan from uh, 13th Move Games. So tell us a little bit about you, and then we'll dive in. Hi. Thanks, Shannon. Uh, my name is Stefan Kelly. I am known as Bald Beastie on Threads, uh, Bald Beastie on Instagram, uh, Grandpa Beastie on TikTok. Uh, I'm around, you know, I'm here and there. Um, uh, before I was all of this, <laughs> I, I'm a retired personal trainer and fitness instructor. Um, I did that for a good long while. I have a degree in theater. Uh, I was a jouster and an actor combatant for a lot of rent fairs in the area. Uh, in the Great Lakes area, I should say. Um, and now uh, I'm working with my family to create tabletop role-playing games, namely Covenant Crucible. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now, um, along with uh, a couple of other projects we can chat about. Um, let's see. We've got the Fellowship of Fitness, which just started today. Myself and 29, no, 29, yes, 29 currently. There may be more coming soon. Oh, no, there will be more. Oh, good. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, no are... sleep till Mordor. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> right? Exactly. That was amazing. Um, so I, I, what started out as a joke between um, Atlas and Too Legit to Crit, and uh, I overheard it, and I held them to task. And so <laughs> what became a joke now has become a full-fledged um, fitness project. Uh, essentially what it is is uh, all of us together, who all the members who have joined, are going to be pooling all of their efforts uh, every day um, for any activity that they do fitness wise so whether it's walking resistance training uh, any kind of sports activity anything you're doing um, they're gonna pull it all together and then every week um, I tally up the numbers on Wednesday of every week uh, I roll for an encounter whether it's a good encounter or bad encounter it remains to be seen they'll know on Wednesday um, but then uh, that way they'll know how severe it is, whether it's good or bad, and maybe if they want to put in a little extra effort to maybe try to overcome these uh, encounters. It could be anything from bad weather to uh, a meddling wizard to uh, you know a, a force of Urakai, any of that stuff. And then, my precious. And my favorite, the golem. Yes, uh, I'm not going to do my golem impression because I don't want to deafen everybody. But um, <laughs> not like my Arnold. My Arnold's way better. Anyway, uh, so at the end of every week we tally it up, and then um, if there's a setback, uh, it just means there's further to go. If there was, uh, if there's a victory, then that means it helped us get us there a little bit sooner. Um, and every so every mile is essentially a mile. Every ten minutes of resistance training is considered a mile. Uh, and all of those, every mile is a plus one to um, the total pool. And then I get to roll that with uh, whatever they encounter and see who comes out on top. The goal is 19,000 miles to start. That may increase depending on 
if bad things happen, uh, and uh, it will all, it will never in, it will never increase or never decrease. It will never get less because it's a distance, right? But right. sometimes you just have to go around obstacles, and sometimes you have to go around things that might try to hurt you. So that might make the journey a little bit longer. But still, yeah. that's the idea. And so all of us collaborating together, all of us cheering each other on, everyone is in their own separate place on their fitness journey. And so, you know, we are all working together to uplift one another to reach those personal goals. But we're just doing it instead of, you know, running next to a stranger on a treadmill trying to run faster than they are. We're all just kind of keeping pace with each other and trying to help each other and get each other to excel and achieve those goals. And I think it's going to be a great, great time. I'm looking for this is the first time we've ever done anything like this. I honestly, I thought it would be like maybe 10 people. <laughs> it's like <laughs> eight, eight people, 10 people. But lo and behold, 30 people showed up and Heck more yeah. are excited about it. And we're going to be posting about it every Wednesday and every Sunday. Um, so what's going to happen is I'll do a write-up of what are the encounters, a brief synopsis of the adventure or whatever. So it's kind of like combining fitness in D&D, you know, or some fitness in a tabletop role-playing game, which is two things I'm extremely passionate about excited about if you can't tell <laughs> yeah you gamified fitness i also want all of our uh viewers to know right now that when we were setting this up i specifically asked stefan if he was going to stay chill sitting back like that or oh, if it? he was going to get up in my face <laughs> and I so I was chill. so i I s no, I love your passion and if we cut off your forehead and lose your lose your head, I'm okay because it's a beautiful thing. I lose yeah. my head all the time. I lose my head all the time. Yeah. If we lost our head more, there'd be there'd be a lot more joy, I'll tell you that. We gotta be doing that. Um, yeah, so you gamifying fitness, I think, is he has no chill, golden retriever energy. I know, it's, yep. and I legit asked. I was like, "Are you sure you're gonna be back there?" Because he was I, like I all was back in the chair. I was, back. I'm like, I'm I was like, nope. "I gotta get, I gotta get you up close and personal." Nope, <laughs> nope, nope. I'm just too excited. <laughs> I, you know, I try to. There is no such no thing. Kidding. No, there is no, no too excited. No. It's just excited. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's amazing. I think it's awesome. Gamifying fitness is great. And just so uh, so we're clear, my fitness, I go into my lightsaber dojo. So I pop on oh, my nice. VR headset. Yeah, and I go and I go into my lightsaber dojo because I, you know, you don't know when Darth Vader's going to come in and you're going to have to go to battle. So yeah, so right that's on. how I do it. Yeah, because uh, right that's awesome. Yeah, and fitness is one of those things. I think like. It, it, like you said, it's personal, each individual um, situation, but then also with all the different life that you have going on all the time, I was like very active, healthy, you know, playing uh, beach volleyball several times a week, multiple times uh, for several hours, you know, that kind of stuff. And uh, life changes and you, you know, and then you lose different things and then, okay, now you're going to adjust and do this thing. And, uh, and I'm one of those people that I have to have fun when I'm working out. If I'm not having fun, it's just not happening. Like it's not going to, it's not going to go down. I used to do connect, you know, the Xbox connect game. Yep. That's how I, I, I did it for quite a long time. So, uh, so yeah. So if you're out there listening and you're like, yeah, I'm not a fitness person or whatever. Yeah. Not either. So like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, it, it's just about um, moving your body and and getting more active and doing it in a fun way and with community. So um, exactly, exactly. Yeah. it doesn't have to be all at once. You don't have to go to the gym for an hour. You know, I mean, none of it has to happen that way. You can tell me the total distance you walked in a day. You know, there's apps that will track your steps, and then you can say, you know what, I walked five thousand steps. Oh, look, that's like two miles. That's awesome. Yeah, heck yeah. It may not have been all at once, but that's okay. Um, yeah. We're all doing our part. Yeah, like for me, it's my famous, my my favorite, my favorite physical activities are things that are, um, like I dig the lightsaber dojo thing. I think that's really cool. I like kettlebells. Kettlebells are. Oh, I love kettlebells. Jam. Yeah, like I used to lift, I used to lift heavy when I was younger. Um, I was in the thousand pound club. Um, you know, I did, uh, I did a lot of that stuff, and I, I'm, I can't now. Uh, oh, DDR, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt you, but I'm like the river rafting oh, game and DDR was like, heck yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. 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 So, I I did uh, connect sports the whole bit. Yeah, uh, I, you know that I, soccer I, goal I, thing. I, Woo. Oh, that was pretty good. That was pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Um, but see, I was like, you know, and I I played rugby a little bit, you know, for Kent Fun. I was a fencer. 
Um, so I did a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. But my favorite is, I have two favorites. My favorite is kettlebells. Um, they're just so much, they're just perfect. I mean, they're great for everything. If and you then, say burpees, um, I'm ending this right now. <laughs> no, I, I can't do burpees. My hips are killing me. Um, but I do, uh, I, I get a big, one of those big truck tires and hit it with a sledgehammer a lot. Oh, um, how fun. Strength. Yeah, because it's really, it's stress relieving and, you know, it'll get you and you're, you're working all your muscles. Like you, oh, yeah. you work your core so much if you, if you're swinging it right, you know. Yeah. Um, I do the kickboxing. The, there you go. Thought, yeah. yeah. Any, any kind of movement, anything that gets your heart rate up, anything that does that, that's, that's you know, that's what it's about. Yeah. And having fun. Right. Um, I used to run boot camps all the time and, and everyone would, they, they said they'd hate it. They, they loved to hate me and they hated to love me uh, because... <laughs> We would do things that they would, they'd get so mad at me. Yeah. Like they'd, they'd flip the tire or they'd roll the tire or whatever. I'm like, oh, good, now bring it back. And they're like, no. And then they do it, but they were grumping about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty normal. I screamed at my personal trainer for <laughs> the entire time that they were my personal trainer until I moved. <laughs> and you yeah. didn't have to hear me screaming anymore. But yeah, <laughs> but also had a blast. And he used to do like, he used to gamify the fitness for me, you know, so it's, yeah, it's fine. So, so what you're saying is if people are like wanting to jump in and get involved, where should they go to do that? Um, you can hit me up on threads, bald beastie on threads. And if you, I think my link tree is still in the top of the chat. Um, I probably could pin it. Is that a thing I can do? I don't know what I'm doing here, guys. (laughs) I, I don't know Twitch. I'm old. I don't know any of these things. I, yeah. Oh, look at that. I think I can. Oh, great. Yeah, so... Unable uh, to pin. Uh, uh, I don't know why. Anyway, my link tree, Grandpa Beastie on Linktree, um, or if you just, you know, uh, search up Bald Beastie on threads, um, that's a way to do it as well. Or if you know Atlas, because everybody knows Atlas, because, you know, she's awesome. Um, yeah. You can find her Discord, find her thing on her Discord on her Linktree and go there. And we have a whole channel direct dedicated to that, which is awesome. So, Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, we excited. got some Roll yes. D5 in the house. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> excited to play Covenant Crucible. I haven't even talked about Covenant Crucible yet. Oh, I know. He, he's so stoked about walking to Mordor that we just <laughs> we just got right yeah, into uh, it. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah so tell us, tell us what Covenant Crucible is, first off, because you've got, what, two, two successful Kickstarters? Am I right on that? Yep. Two, 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 uh, two successful Kickstarters. We had the first one last year. It was a, a wild ride because we started the Kickstarter. And this is what's just wacky about world and life. Um, we, we had been meaning to do this for a while. And then the first Kickstarter we ran, we didn't really know much about Kickstarter or, you know, doing anything like that. So it didn't, wasn't successful. Um, but the second one we did, um, we did it a little bit, uh, more wisely, I would say. Uh, and we had most of it written already, the core rule book uh, for Covenant Crucible, which is a tabletop role-playing game of modern-day witchcraft. Um, uh, essentially, what, yeah, right, exactly. It's, it's uh, I, my elevator pitch. It's like, all right, if you, you took, if the, imagine if you would. Uh, imagine movie, if you will. Imagine <laughs> if you will. Uh, if you took the movies, uh, The Last Witch Hunter, with Vin Diesel, uh, and then the John Wick movies. And if they got together and had a really pretty baby, this game would be it. Uh, I say pretty <laughs> because the artwork is amazing. Um, yeah, it is. But it's, it's got all of, the, um, all of the feel and the grit uh, and the politics of like the John Wick movies where you have like, the, like they had the Continentals in the movies. We have the Crucibles, uh, which are, you know, hotels that are in a lot of major cities around the world. Um, that are neutral ground for witches. They're witch-only hotels. So for the most part, you're not going to encounter anything other than witches. Occasionally, you'll encounter some supernatural creatures. Occasionally, you'll encounter non-witches who are in witch business that are escorted or sponsored by witches. But for the most part, the crucibles are safe grounds. And then there's the coven, which is like a corporate big CEO-type thing where they have a board of directors, which are all the heads of the nine major witch houses, plus three other ones, plus the CEO, um, that are, they'll, you know, they'll advocate for witches. They'll arbitrate when there's legal issues. They'll resolve disputes if you are a member of the coven. But a lot of witches aren't. A lot of witches are independent. 
but it, it's modern day, a little bit darker, a little bit grittier. Um, but uh, and witches aren't prominent. But the really cool thing is uh, that everyone has the potential to do magic, and some people even do magic without realizing it. Um, because magic is all about intention. There's no spell slots. There's no, hey, it's Joe. There's no uh, like uh, spell pools or anything like that. It's all about intention. And you can, you state what you want to do. And we have a, a pretty robust and diverse system where it's flexible to do pretty much anything with any kind of combination uh, between attribute, skill, and subskill. So you could come up with many different ways to do the same thing, and it just depends on how you look at it. So that's the basic idea and the basic premise. Um, magic is like any other skill, like computer programming. Most people don't do it because it takes a lot of practice, just like real life. I was, I'm, I'm like biting my tongue. I'm like, right? this is like just like real life. It. You have the magic in you. You're just not using right. it. Or if you are, you well, don't know it. <laughs> you don't know how to use it or yeah. else, you know, so it's because it's all about intention. Uh, one day I dream of writing a nonfiction book about um, incorporating it, the intention that one would put into fitness into magic and combining those two things. And I think it'd be really, really cool. That's my that's my bucket list book to write. But um, but this this we've got this one. This one came out. Um, like I said, we started the Kickstarter last January. The second day of the Kickstarter, I had a heart attack and was hospitalized um and so it was a pretty wild ride so the the first while we got off to a really good start it didn't didn't the conclusion wasn't the best and so we've been working on um getting stuff uh i mean we got everything out everybody got their stuff well before it was due um and the artwork was great the the system is cool um but this time we've taken a lot of time to uh, again pre-write everything with this next uh, expansion that we're publishing that we did a successful Kickstarter for called Covenant Crucible Unbound. It's designed to expand upon the, the basic ideas that you found in the Covenant Crucible rulebook, um, expands on house lore, expands the uh, planes of existence that we are aware of, um, and it's intended for higher level play. Like for, you have, because this, the core rule book has, you know, you have some characters, you have rules, and everybody wants to start playing. So you start playing. Well, what happens after, you know, a year and a half of these same characters who have a ton of experience and they are extremely powerful witches? What do you do? Well, that's what Unbound mm -hmm. seeks to address. It gives you a lot of information about um, uh, more houses that are out there, more traits to acquire and to use. Um, certain traits that are restricted by uh, experience level, so you can't even even uh, start to obtain them until after you are certain have a certain number of experience levels. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that's going to be in there. It's really really fun. Plus the lore between, um, like the lore of the Crucibles, the lore of the Coven. You've got um, all the house lore that delves into um, instead of just a few. Uh, you know, uh, a few brief paragraphs on the write-up of what each house is and what they do and their traits. Now it goes into the lore of who, who some of the house heads are, what you can expect inside the house, and some of those things too. So a whole ton of stuff. And um, we're going to be starting a new one once this one is um, – uh, so once this one is out, I'm looking at the, the everybody's here. Yay! What's everybody's here. No, I'm so excited. Yes. Thank you. Thank it's you all for coming. I'm so excited. Right. <laughs> Me too. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So that's um. That's it. We have a new one coming out. That's going to be so, in May, I think. Before we talk about the new one, I want to pause for oh, yeah. a second because um, you're talking about the art and you know some of the things that you've done and everything else. But a lot of people might not know this, but you've got a pretty cool little setup going on oh, yeah. with this family business. So why don't you? Yes. Yeah, why don't you talk about that for a little bit? Yeah, Thirteenth Move Games is a family-run business, um, and I say that because. Um, we have a, a small family, uh, small non well, I would say non traditional family, but let's um, make it traditional, uh, shall we? Like, let's make this yeah. the norm. <laughs> we, uh, let's, oh yeah, let's let's just do throw tradition out the window. And just yes, exactly. Cool. That's what I'm um, saying. <laughs> so preach, uh, right? Right, exactly. My wife um, wrote a lot of the lore and the, did a lot of the world building. Um, I assisted. I did the mechanics uh, in the Covenant Crucible core book. Uh, our daughter. Um, she, we call her the art goblin. She does all the art. Uh, and then my son, he does like some of the tech stuff. He's working on computer programming. So he's, uh, he 
like help with the discord and he got like he knew more about me about discord than i did uh, when i started and so he helped get the official discord the 13th moon game discord server set up um which we run an official game there too which is pretty awesome uh so yeah so he so we do it all together this is our family run business and everybody contributes um and we pay them just so you know <laughs> people get paid uh so that's not like we're they're we're using because they're family or anything like that it's because we need their assistance they're very good at what they do and they get paid um just like uh the the next one yeah please do drop your questions if you got them um so that's about 13th moon games we've been official for a little over a year i think um i don't know the details you have to ask my wife that right Uh, (laughs) she's the one that did the llc stuff uh but yeah so we've been doing that and you know we've we've been you know i was trying to make this work as well as working a full-time job um that just it just wasn't working uh i couldn't do it all and get it all done so uh uh, i'm doing this full-time uh and writing um how long from idea conception to actually producing the product did it take? That's a lot of work. It is. Good question. I uh, love thank it. Thank you, Atlas. Uh, so I can tell you the origin of Covenant Crucible. Um, it was, uh, I wish I could remember the year. It was November. It was Thanksgiving of 2021. Yeah. Yeah, let's say that. It was uh, Thanksgiving 2021. Um, we, we, we do thanks gaming where we do this Thanksgiving dinner and then on the Friday and Saturday, we have all our friends over to do games and eat our leftovers. Oh, that's amazing. So, right. Yeah. So, um, she, after one of those, after one of those evenings, she's, she was really wanting to run a game for me cause I'm the forever DM, but she didn't know any of the rules well enough. So she, and this was all, I had no idea this was even happening. This thought was even happening. So, uh, she says, she comes to me and she says, hey, so do you want to take our relationship to the next level? And of course, without hesitation, I said, yes, <laughs> not knowing ex- anything that she was saying. Yeah. Like, let's, let's make a tabletop role-playing game together. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. And so that's what we did. We, um, we started writing. We looked at, we did research uh, from then uh, and started writing a basic mechanic system. We did a little bit of play testing just between ourselves at the, at the dinner table. Um, and then in February of 2021, no, 2022, February of 2022. I was like, that doesn't math. <laughs> right. No, math doesn't work. Math is a four letter word. Come on. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. So, we, we, in February 2022, we started a play test server and we got some of our friends together who we gamed with before. We said, hey, come on over. Let's try this out. And if you want to try this game with us, they all agreed. We all made characters. And then um, my wife has been running uh, two games, two play test games. For almost now, it's gone on over two years. We took a, a few month hiatus when she was finishing up her book. She's an author as well. She's a nonfiction author um, with published through Llewellyn. She writes uh, uh, pagan and witchy stuff, like so witchy and all that stuff. Uh, amazing, cool stuff. And she writes articles. She's in the calendar um, and the almanac and all that good stuff. I like to hype her up because she's amazing. Heck yeah. Um, That's so, what we're here right, for. Exactly. Hype, hype, hype. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, she's got like uh, what four books now? I think that's gonna be that are being published through Llewellyn. Um, so anyway, also a little fun fact is uh, before we were talking uh, before the stream today, and I thought it was uh, Llewellyn because oh, I right. yeah because I put a fantasy spin on every word I see apparently. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> just thought that yes. was yeah. Yeah, that was it was pretty funny. I was like, I how do you say it? I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. I didn't I didn't think it so anyway. Um but yeah, so how long it takes. Uh well that was the concept and then it went through many renditions um from February through uh and then we moved in July of that year out here to Wyoming. Um and in that time we tried to do a Kickstarter because we had a large portion of it already done, um, written up and everything, and we had the idea of what we wanted. Uh, it wasn't successful, but that's okay. It didn't stop us. We continued to expand and grow and play test. And then January of uh, 2023 three is when we ran. Yes, 2023 is when we ran, ran the last I'm trying to math for you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'm not, I can remember dates. I just don't remember years if I'm talking about like timelines. Timelines mess me up. Um, so, Time is a weird uh, soup. 
you know, it's not, it's not linear, right? So mm -hmm. uh, it's a construct. Anyway, <laughs> so we did this thing in January, uh, and it was successful, and we published it, and we printed it, and we sent it off. And we were like, this is really awesome. People, people that we play with like it. We just got to get the word out. Um, so I started, you know, I had to go get a, a job because I, you know, hospital bills and everything because of the heart attack. Um, but then it just wasn't working. So um, we uh, started, we put out this Kickstarter, the second one, and it was successful. Um, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to start putting out more and more, more and more Kickstarters. For us, the timeline to go back to reference Atlas's question, um, we like to, from start to finish, if we're going to do something, we want to have a good foundation first. That takes some time of writing. It could take a month. It could take three months, um, depending on how uh, the many other tasks you have and how many other projects you have. Uh, for us, that's this is uh, Unbound was all we focused on. Um, we started it as, uh, I think we started putting up addendum um, after this was published. We took a break, a hiatus for like the summer, uh, this last summer. And then we started at back up again, I think in August or September. And then um, from that point, we from then we started writing more and more and compiling everything because we've been making rules updates as we went with the playtest server. I just compiled them into a book and then we built off of that. And so that's how Unbound came to be. So it could take it depends on how much time you have. It could take as little as three months. It could take as long as a year. It just depends on what else is going on and how much time you have to devote to it and where you want to be when you start launching that Kickstarter, which I think it's a good idea to have a major portion done because uh, yeah. then, you know, you can say I have all this stuff, right? Yeah, so. I think that's kind of like the norm now where uh, people, when they're launching, they're pretty much done with their Kickstarter. They're just getting the funding that they need to actually get it published or you know whatever right what about kickstarter in general we'll come back to covenant crucible in a little bit but kickstarter in general there's always so many questions that people have because you know especially in a creative community there's all these different ideas and people get you know fired up about something that they want to do but then they're kind of like lost on on what to do so Having gone through a few of them, some successful, some not, do you have any specific, you know, bits of advice other than keep going? Because clearly, right. you know, that's <laughs> that's the thing. But uh, do you have anything specifically that that you'd like to share? You know, that's maybe a tip that for for them that somebody that might be looking into it. Absolutely, um, don't get daunted. Uh, it's daunting, and and it's okay to feel daunted. It's okay to feel like overwhelmed, um, but. Uh, the thing I've noticed, and I wish I would have found this community before I did these Kickstarters because it would have been amazing, um, uh, the support of communities when you have uh, you know, a few people. You, you've got the TTRPG community, and I'm going to call this back to Threads. Uh, the, the TTRPG community on Threads has, is just tremendously supportive of one another. And uh, yeah. they hype each other. I've never seen a community hype each other up so much as this one. Uh, which I absolutely adore because I'm all about hyping it up. But but uh, to see it in a, such a larger scale and to have everybody celebrate the successes and support the, the not successes um, is just, you know, it's amazing. And, and uh, when you're doing Kickstarter, um, it's keeping up with, uh, well, first, make sure you're setting realistic goals. Um, you know, understand that, know what you need and uh, a lot of times in the art community, you'll see people who will undersell themselves and know that, uh, you know, nothing's, nothing bad would happen if this doesn't successfully go off the first time because you can always try again. Um, but don't undersell just to try to get it to be successful. It's more important that you set a goal that's realistic for you where you actually get you know, I mean, you get paid. If you do the work, yeah. you're going to get paid. You should get paid. Uh, so uh, I'm a firm believer in that. And I'm a firm believer that uh, independent artists should get paid. Uh, if you're going to use their work, they should get referenced and paid. Um, yep. Our editors are going to get credited and get copies of the books. Our, anybody that's an NPC is going to get a copy of the book. Um, you know, all of that. Uh, so set you know, goals, bounce ideas off of people who have done it before. Reach out. We're a resource. Reach out to your community. Ask questions. You don't, And just because you get the advice 
uh, from one person doesn't mean you have to take it. That's huge. Yeah, right. Exactly. You get a lot of advice. You get a lot of people who talk like they know what they're doing. I like to pretend like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, I could talk pretty confidently, but I'm not going to try to sell you on something that's not, you know, not authentic. So, uh, you know, if if you have questions, ask. If you don't like the answer, ask someone else. Um, if all the answers you're getting are the same, then maybe it's something that you might have to consider. But it's hard. Kickstarter is is a is a it's a wild wild beast, and uh, it can work. It can not work. It can be a great way to get your project funded. Um, it can also be a source of tremendous anxiety and stress. Um, don't hit refresh all the time. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> don't read the comments. Uh, there, no. <laughs> there are well, yeah, there, you have to. Okay. You have to read but, the comments. Uh, I know. <laughs> right. uh, but there are a lot of a lot of people that really dwell on the they just keep hitting refresh to see where it's at where's it at now where's it at now you know take some step o- steps away from it it's okay you can walk away from kickstarter just because kickstarter is 24 7 doesn't mean you have to be those are my tips i mean take them or leave them um you know but i can't stress it enough before you start the kickstarter re- establish reach out and establish yourself in a community in that ttrpg community see what's going on see if there's something like that out there and just because there is doesn't mean you can't do yours you know, do the research, talk to people, reach out. We're yeah. pretty friendly, I think. <laughs> so, absolutely, yeah. Well, and and I would agree completely on threads. I mean, I'm I'm here on Twitch doing this right now when I swore I wanted nothing to do with Twitch, um, <laughs> or or having my own Discord, and I have both of those now. Um, and it's really because I got so fired up by the people in the community and what everybody is doing and how supportive everybody is and, um, you know, just being active and playing and doing all of that. But it's really, it it is so empowering to be in that space. Um, Yeah. Yeah. It's hard not to get excited, right? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And I, and I think um, I'll add to your, I I mean, I have zero uh, Kickstarter uh, experience, but I'll add to that a little bit to just say, don't do something because you want to make money off of it. Do something because it's something that you love and you feel really empowered to do it because, you know, that's, that's what you're seeing right here, right? You're seeing an example of somebody who really just loved this concept, loved this idea and had the support in the, you know, in the family unit to do that. And then also that exterior support to go out. Um, and you know, the more you go, the, the, the better and more powerful it's going to be, you know, as you keep going. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's just one of those things that, um, you really need, uh, you need to be, uh, good with accepting, uh, accepting advice and also need to be good at, uh, you know, maybe saying, well, that's not for me. Yeah. And not be daunted by, because you can see, you'll, the first thing you jump on the thread, you see a lot of people who are really successful. You see a lot of people who are doing all these actual plays, all these Twitches. They have their Twitch affiliates. They have all this stuff. And I think that's really great. Um, don't focus on the numbers. Yeah. It's not about that. It's about, you know, I mean, granted, you should get paid. And if you love what you do and you want to make it work and you want to bring it out to the world, that's great. And you should also get paid for your work. You yes. Know, keep that in mind. Don't, but don't do it because of the money. Do it because you love it, like she said. But yeah. it can be both. You can, you can get, you know, I mean, we're not. It I'm should be both. Like, it, should it should be both. Yeah, absolutely. So don't get me started on today's society about how it's not. No, that's a whole nother, at least, yeah, that's a, a whole, whole nother stream. Just, that's a whole nother <laughs> stream. Yeah, we'll have to come back and, and, and do that of justice. But yeah. Um, but speaking of community, though, you, you know, so you're playing on your channel, but uh, you've got some streams coming up as well, right? Where people are going to be playing Covenant and Crucible. Oh yeah. Uh, I well, I did actually. I ran one for Too Legit to Crit um, and friends. Um, that's going to be coming up on their channel. If you're not following them, check them out. If you would, um, they're really cool people. Waffle on, my wayward son. Y'all are awesome. Heck uh, yeah. But then um, also, uh, I, I did some interviews that are. I don't know if and when they're going to be aired. Um, those are really cool um, characters without stories. Just. Oh. Awesome. Yeah. If awesome. you're not listening to that, you need to get oh, on that's it. That's great. Yeah. And then yeah. uh, 
uh, roll d5. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so oh, excited. No. I'm, yes, it's, and it's going to happen after my surgery. So it'll, I'll be all rested up, ready to go, healed up. It'll be so much fun. Um, I cannot wait. I'm, I'm super excited to get the word out. And that's what, you know, that's, that's what it's about. And like, uh, the community is amazing. Uh, and you see these really super successful people, uh, but they're approachable. They're yeah. friendly and they're supportive and it can feel daunting like a competition, but it's not like they want to see you succeed as much as they succeed. Um, I, I'm yeah. saying this, I'm not successful by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, I'm successful. What is success? <laughs> right. What is it? Right. What do you define? If you define it as number of followers uh, and all that stuff, that's then yeah. no, I'm not successful. I don't care because I don't care about the number of followers. What I care about is if, I have somebody that's following me that is has their day made better because of my influence. I'm successful. I don't care if it's one or 100, right? So <laughs> um, sleep well, Atlas. We yes, appreciate you hanging well, out. Atlas, thanks for coming out. Yay. <laughs> um, yeah. So, because I know it's it's what almost nine o'clock out there, right? Eastern time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on Eastern so, time. <laughs> so I'm so uh, used. I'm, I'm on Eastern time, but I'm always playing on Pacific time somehow. I don't know. I don't know how that works out, but it's, I, 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 it's it, it is. Everybody's yeah. it, apparently. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah. I, I want to, bef uh, before we run uh, to the next thing too, I just want to take a second too and shout out the uh, TTRPG Collective, um, which is uh, another one that hasn't been uh, mentioned, but amazing community. Uh, that we're both a part of that community as well. And yeah. Uh, yeah, and just so much support, whether you're streaming, not streaming, if you're, you know, a writer, if you've got games that, uh, you know, that you're putting out and um, Aaron does an uh, incredible job uh, of ke keeping keeping the chaos semi contained. Uh, but it's beautiful madness. Uh, so, yeah, I just I just didn't want to cool friends there. It was really cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah. So I, I want to go into um, Covenant Crucible a little bit more, if you don't mind. And Oh, not at all. Yeah. Um, I, talk about, I, I could talk all day about it, I tell you. Yeah, um, I know you can. Yeah. And, I, and I'd like to do that. Like, I tell us a little bit about, um, and I know this was kind of like a combo thing, but tell us a little bit about the character creation process and, and kind of um, the, when you're sitting down and you're actually kind of deciding what's going to go in, what's not going to go in. I know you're you know, your wife is doing a lot of the writing, uh, but there's no way that you're not having conversations about this oh, as right. well. And we sit next to uh, each other. Like you can't see her, her seat is right over here. Yeah. She's not here <laughs> yeah. right now, but, but we work, we collaborate. We, and we can do it just by looking at each other. And we can always tell when we type something and then we give each other a look. We're like, mm, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. I um, love that. Yeah. So, so talk about right? that a little bit. Um, so, yeah. So the, uh, the character creation process, um, uh, I wanted to make things, you know, I wanted to make them as diverse so we could have a, uh, and I use the word robust a lot, but I think it really fits. Uh, we wanted a system that could stand up to uh, whatever pe players throw at us, right? So, um, so the way it works is you have four attributes, um, and I organized them because I like acronyms. Um, so <laughs> I organized them in uh, will, body, agility, and magic. Those are the four attributes, right? And if you just take the first letter of each word, it's wabam. So that's how I can remember it because I like that stuff. So, uh, so that's the four attributes. Um, easy, right? There's only four attributes. Um, but an attribute is only a third, well, not even a third, about a quarter of the formula. Because um, this system is a 2D12 system. And I got to kind of, I can't really address character creation without talking a little bit about how they work. Um, yeah, you're the mechanics guy. You got to get crunchy. I right. know. I got it. Exactly. It's okay. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Go ahead. You get know. crunchy. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, all right. Um, <laughs> oh, no. Knuckle crack. <laughs> We're in for right. it now. So, uh, so it's a 2D12 system. Um, you formulate a target number. Um, and that target number, the higher the number, the better, because that's the number you need to roll under or equal to on 2D12. That's it. Because the 2D12s, the D12s don't get enough love. And I wanted to do something about that. Um, and so, you know, when we started this back in November of 2021, I was like, let's just do it as D12. Let's only use D12s. And so we did. Um, and so we had to figure out how to make a formula where it's 
possible to not succeed all the time but not fail all the time either on 2d12 so we made it there's a formula it's attribute plus skill plus sub skill so you have your four attributes and then you have nine skills um and those are uh let's see if i can remember them all academics oh yeah that's a quiz artistic athletics magical martial social strategic technical and underworld those are the nine skills and underneath each of those skills are seven sub skills so that means there's a total of 63 sub skills that's daunting you look at that sheet and you go oh i don't know what i'm doing i'm scared now and it's i get it it can be scary but if you take it one step at a time and i created a google sheet that's color coded because i like colors they you can they match up really well so uh, i color coded it so that you knew what to add together to make your target number and then you knew what to add together to make your levels of success because target numbers are tells you they tell you whether or not you succeed levels of success tell you how well you succeed if it's applicable so you know you could be maybe you succeed on sneaking but how well do you succeed on sneaking is that person going to notice you or are they not how do you know how can you tell so uh we made the system where it's you spend levels in your attributes, then you spend levels in your skills, and then you spend levels in your sub skills. You know, your sub skills define your specialized training. Are you uh, are you a fisticuff fighter? Are you a pugilist? Or um, are you a hunter gatherer? Like, do you do you go out hunting and trapping? Do you, are you a mechanic? Are you a hacker? Are you a thief? Are you, you know, a grifter? Things like that. Um, are you a gambler? Uh, there are a lot of those different sub skills where you focus. The cool thing about ca- creating a character is that um, the idea is that you make a specialist um, because you're going to be working with a team, and we have specific mechanics for working together as a team. And it's very apparent that when everybody works together, it's you can accomplish the you can you can be mighty. You you're big damn heroes, right? Uh, so. Uh, working together is where it's at. Um, you have one character can be really good at one thing, but you get a circle of witches together and they do a ritual. That's hard to beat, right? That's powerful magic. Um, so that's the basics around character creation and character concepts. The last thing in there is traits. When I say that, um, you know, attributes and skills and sub skills, that's the formula, but then there are traits. Traits really define who your character is and what they've done, what their experiences have been, and what they have done, haven't done, what they uh, have or don't have. Um, those define that defines those things. Some of them are magical in nature. Some of them are resources and resourceful in nature. Um, but there's a lot of them, and I added. We added a whole bunch with Unbound, <laughs> like a lot, a lot. I think I added over a hundred. Oh uh, wow! Right? Yeah. So yeah. Well, um, so you can make them Unbound. Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, like we added, we we added like grafting rules, supernatural creature grafting rules. So like you can, <laughs> you know, get like a, a unicorn horn, you know, and graft it. Whatever. So you can do lots of cool stuff. Heck um, yeah. Yeah. You, oh, you made it a little cyber. Yeah, right. A little bit. That was the yeah. idea. Um, and then, uh, you know, and then coming up, we're going to, our next one is going to be Beyond, which is uh, Covenant Crucible Beyond, which is going to be um, different player player character templates so you know because there's supernatural creatures like demons there's fey creatures there's vampires there's werewolves were shifters so you can like wear raccoons um they're prominent in the covenant crucible core book there's a, a group a pack of were raccoons that they all revere a very large possum and they drive them around in a van it's great um okay i'm gonna just call yeah. this out right now if anybody wants to gm a table full of were raccoons i <laughs> am so in that's amazing i'll do it i'll do it oh heck yeah right (laughs) so so that's where beyond is going to be about those you can know you you hear about them in these in unbound and in the core rule book but then you get to um uh in in beyond you get to actually play them you can play a vampire you can play a a dampier you can play uh, a, you know, a failing or a fey creature, a half fey or demon spawn. You know, you can play all these different creatures, and it's really we, it ghosts and cryptids and constructs and you name it. Um, that's what we're aiming for with this next one. We wanted to. Add, it was originally an add-on, but we or not an add-on, but a um, stretch goal that we never achieved. In both of them, both the Kickstarters we run, but every time we've ta- taken this game elsewhere, uh, people have always talked about they want to play a shifter, they want to play a vampire. I'm like, okay, well. 
here we are. Let's just make a supplement to do that since we couldn't yeah. achieve it that way. But we clearly people want it and we want to write about it. Let's do it. Yeah. So I don't even do. have my current Kickstarter in my hand yet. And I already want your next one. <laughs> right. So just take so yeah. my money. <laughs> uh, and so, well, well, thank you. I will. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, uh, and it, most of it goes to the artist. Uh, but uh, what we do is uh, we're, we're doing that. We've, um, because Covenant and Crucible came out, we've done some reno- revisions and renovations and Unbound has, we'll see a lot of those to make things more, um, more, they mesh, they mesh better, make things more uh, explicable because there's a lot, we left a lot of amb- ambiguity because we wanted to, with the storytellers, to tell their own story. Just because we see things a certain way doesn't mean they should see it a certain way. Um, you know, uh, also one of the, one of the, and I'll address this. One of the biggest complaints about Covenant Crucible core book is that it's Eurocentric. It is because that's who I am. Uh, not because, and I, I didn't write about things of other cultures because I don't want to appropriate that other culture. Uh, yeah. and we, you know, I don't want to take somebody else's, uh, culture or their something that's, that's personal and, um, and ancestral to them. Yeah. And, you know, throw my Eurocentric view on it and say, this is what this is. That's not cool. So I really wanted to make something that was, um, you know, that that we could put out there for other people to identify with so they could take it and make it their own. But that also left the problem of there's a lot of ambiguity out there. They don't know how to answer these questions. And so that's what Unbound is going to help with. But we're also taking uh, all the rules revisions and we're making into a PDF and we're going to put it up on Drive-Thru RPG for free. So that way, if you have the core rule book, and if you Amazing. don't, you can get the, yeah. That way, you know, because, I mean, you guys, everybody bought the, you folks bought the core rule book. Um, you bought the, you're going to buy, maybe you, hopefully you bought Unbound, um, which will, you know, so that way we're like, hey, let's take these revisions, make them free so people can see it. And that way they get something that, uh, you know, will help them because, yeah, I, I you know, there's, there's typographical errors. There's little errors here and there in the core rule book. I get that. There's going to be. It's our first project ever. Right. I've never done anything like that before. Yeah. So uh, I'm not going to make anybody else pay for that. So we'll put it up there for free. You know, it, it just costs us time and effort to make it into PDF. And that's what we've done. So that'll be coming up um, once we publish Unbound. It's gonna, they're going to go out around the same time, which is that's coming up pretty quick. Um, oh, wow. We're getting unbound um ready for review um from our reviewers uh it's going to be reviewed which is something we didn't do last we reviewed it but it was just us and Mm -hmm. i just had heart attack so i wasn't the best eye um so we're getting reviewers they're going to be credited in the book but they're going to each take chunks of this and so they're going to review and then hopefully everything will be um when we get it back everything will be much cleaner more concise and it's 200 pages of awesomeness. <laughs> it's going to be so great. Yeah. And it's like, you are you know, they're like your children. So like, you know, you, you, you don't want to take stuff out, you know, like you just want to keep oh, in, keep hard. adding to it. And you're, you're like, wait, I'll just use this later. This will be in the next one. Yeah, right. That was, that was hard because we, we wrote all this stuff and we, that's why we, we had it all written. The problem is we had it all written and then we tried to put it into 200 pages on the PDF and it wasn't going. <laughs> so we... <laughs> column width and font yeah, size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't right. need any room at the top. <laughs> yeah. yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, well, we have really cool artwork, a splash artwork that goes around. the. Oh, it's going to be really cool. It just looks really neat. Yeah. Um, but we learned a lot from the first one, so we're going to apply that knowledge to the second one. But the one of the things we did is we're, those revisions I talked about that were publishing for free, they originally were going to be in Unbound. We didn't have room for them. <laughs> so, <laughs> but they need to be out there. So everybody's going to get them. And then yeah. we'll, when we go to conventions, we'll take copy, printed copies with us so people can get those too. If they buy the core rule book. Or, yeah. Or if they have the core rule book and they buy the Unbound, they'll get the copy of the revisions for free. Yeah. There's some so, really nice uh, sites online too where you can uh, just get things, you know, printed out that you've purchased and stuff like that as well. So I oh, don't yeah. know. If, I mean, yeah. drive through is print on demand. So, yeah. Exactly. So you can get the hard copy if you want. Right. Um, but yeah. Uh, so that's it. And then I know that we're planning on doing, um, uh, we really wanted to do uh, Covenant Crucible International. Um, we, wanted to do, we wanted to reach out and get those different cultures' opinions on magic mm-hmm. and get those different cultures' opinions on, on stuff like that. And so if, you know, that's going to be another Kickstarter. And if we do that, and once we do that, the large, large portion of the proceeds from that are going to uh, sensitivity readers to make certain 
uh, that we don't culturally appropriate because that's super important. Absolutely. I think, you know, uh, if you're going to represent something, do it right. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and I'm and I, I by no means am an expert on any of that stuff, which is why I would reach out to the experts. Yeah, exactly. There you go. So yeah, um, yeah. So that was uh, that was a big thing, and I'm I'm just I'm just so <laughs> so excited to get Unbound out there and to run some of these to get just to get people to see how the system works and to see how fun it can be. Yeah. Um, so what are so, the plans for that? Uh, well, right now I've got. Um, we have the official 13th Moon game disc or 13th Moon Games Discord game of Covenant Crucible. It's once a month. Um, I don't know if my if the Patreon is linked in the link tree. If it isn't, I'll have to put it in there. But um, let me check real quick. I can look at it right here. Uh, drive through 13 Instagram, Instagram, Instagram. I don't have it on there. I'm going to have to. Oh, it's on our website. Okay, I'm going to put it in there at some point. My link tree will be updated. But um, our Patreon, it's 13th Moon Games. Uh, the one three th moon games um it's uh it's a text based game so it's not like uh it's not like an actual player where it's you know video or anything like that um but it is a text based game you can use tupper box if you'd like i know that's pretty big um and it's once a month uh and then but the the server is active twenty four seven so if you want to do soft r p you can if you have questions you reach out and i'm i'm actively on there every day so uh and i have uh, uh, several of my players will reach out and ask me questions mechanics wise or otherwise almost every day, if not every day, which is totally cool. That way they get, and, and it's great because they, it shows me that they've read the book and read the rules, yeah. which I love. Uh, so, um, so there is that, and that that's active right now. And then I run, um, I'm, I run a paid game table every other Friday. Um, if people want to hire me, uh, you can do that as well. I'm happy to run around schedules. Um, if I can, uh, to run games of Covenant Crucible before that, and I I don't charge a whole lot. I think I, right now the going rate is ten dollars a person for a three or four hour session. Uh, so, you know, get five That's of your great. friends together and fifty bucks, and you got a night. So, you know, um, so that's that's what I do. Uh, and then uh, I know that we got. Um, I'm so excited to roll D five. <laughs> hey, there's my link tree. Um, yeah, it so is. that's going to be fun. And then uh, people will get to see the shenanigans of the two live, two legit to crit. Uh, oh, that's going to be just with. wild. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we recorded it a few months ago, uh, and they broke it into three sections. The first section is the character creation, and, the, and then nice. the two sections, it broke it up into because it was a pretty long session. Um, so they had it left it on the cliffhanger, and then they came back to the second part and resolved it. It was really cool, and it was really cool to see because they – Every group of table uh, tables that I run, um, they uh, they come up with something new or different, uh, a different way to use the magic that I had not seen yet before. So it's awesome. just really cool to see. Yeah. Oh, it's so cool. It's awesome. Um, you know. And then I'm also running um, uh, a game. It's a casual game. I'm running for Atlas and uh, Connell and uh, Tess and uh, Justin and uh sam a friend of theirs too there's just a bunch of people that are really cool that were where it's going to be casual game just so they can see to play it and see what it's like and get them because i i want to be involved with them as much uh, much more than i am right now because they're really cool folk and you yeah this is what i talk about the community right you get you meet right. these people and you see these great and you're like i want to play with these people i want to be a part of this um you know and if i had more time i'd be in all sorts of things yeah. <laughs> i'd love to yeah exactly i love love that active rp aspect you know and, and watching people and i love how i love the character creation process because i i'll walk it walk people through it and they will you get to see them get excited about their character and the stuff they do and then they start talking in character and that's really cool that's like yeah that makes my my little gamer heart just flutter it's so <laughs> good so yeah oh the storytelling is just it's so beautiful and collaborative storytelling is there's just nothing like it, it really is yeah 100 yeah, and the, just the uh, the character creation. Uh, I haven't had a chance to dive into your system yet, so I'm anxiously awaiting um, all of these new things that are coming, and I'm really looking forward to playing. But having you explain a little bit about what was going on in the background and the characters and everything else, I 
am so stoked because I I could be in character creation forever because I just love creating all. Of, I mean, I create characters and then I don't even use them because I'm just like, yep. you know, creating these little worlds or whatever. Um, and there's just so many possibilities with what you've got going on. Yeah, just, it's it's huge. It's it's a it's a, it's a lot. And that was the idea is we wanted to be able to people to make it so that they could do what they wanted to do with their character. Yeah. Uh, but not make them feel penalized because they didn't put skills and set levels in something else, you know? So right. that's one of the things I was talking about, flexibility, formula flexibility. Um, and actually, if you look up 13th Moon Games on YouTube, I think I made some videos a few years, like last year. <laughs> I like how um, you don't even remember. You're like, I, I think I, I did I some did. stuff, yeah. Google, Google reminded me like last week, that remember that time you did this thing? I'm like, oh, really? I did Remember that? you thought cool. you could have a YouTube channel and put stuff on it and right. yeah. Yeah, I love so I love that when old <laughs> when old Shannon shows up and I'm like oh crap I forgot that was out there, <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's that's the past. No. Uh, <laughs> anyway, for me, uh, yeah. So there's the character creation uh, video out there, which is pretty okay, uh, but that was using the core rulebook and doesn't have anything included in from the Unbound yet because yeah. that was like right after the core rulebook came out. So, um, yeah, and like there's like, there's so much like you can. If, if for instance, like I was talking about this the other day, if uh, I present a formula as a storyteller, like, okay, if you're going to, um, let's say you want to really, uh, you know, help this person see your point of view, um, uh, I would say, but maybe you yourself know that it's not really, you, 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 you don't believe it in 110%, you know? So you're going to try to convince them of something. You could roll... Uh, will plus social plus persuasion, but if that's not your character type, and you can like, well, hey boss, can I maybe roll will plus underworld plus deceit? Well, absolutely. Yeah, you can absolutely do something like that. You know, and and you so the players themselves are empowered because they can present um, a different formula to the ST to try to accomplish a task that uh, they kind of thought their character would be able to do, and they want their character to be able to do. It's not a hundred percent guaranteed that that's going to happen, but when you work with your storyteller on trying to get your character to succeed rather than this, the GM saying, no, you can't do that. It makes the, the process and the, the system and the, and the game all that more enjoyable and immersive. If that's the thing that people go for a lot of, some people like it, some people don't, but it's inclusive rather than exclusive. And that's what yeah. I'm, that's like, that's my whole thing. <laughs> right. Include people, have fun. I'm just happy to be included. I'm, you know, I'm happy yeah. to be here. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, you wrote this game because you were having, you know, all these people over and playing games. I mean, that sprouted yeah. this whole concept is like, you know, Hey, we yep. could, we could put this out into the world. We're actually pretty, Here's pretty my, good at this. It was my wife's idea. She was like, she was, she came up with it, and we've all like we love those two movies, like the John Wick movies and the Last Witch Hunter. So we yeah. always, whenever we watch it together, we'll revisit it occasionally sometimes. And when we do that, we're like, man, I'd really like to play in that world, right? Yeah. Because you see a movie that you really want to do something with, and then you do it, and that's, you know, that's where it's at. So yeah, that's how it came to be. No, I think that I think that's awesome. So the the. Um, Forever GM, do you get to actually play your game? My wife, yeah, my wife has been running um, the the playtest game both Wednesday nights and Friday nights. Uh, since, so, what's your since character? Um, oh, good question. I have two. <laughs> oh, nice. Because I was, yeah, because I played uh, my first character. I made was um, was Martin. He is a house vulva. Um, the which are basically they're Vikings. Uh, they are. Uh, they're they're headquarters in Stockholm, Sweden, but they have a a lone house in Chicago. Um, and his Martin Ludwig's he's an American, uh, Norwegian American, uh, and he's was an ex-marine. He came back um, discharged. He was he was pretty broken. Um, had a lot of issues processing things and feeling things, um, and but yet he excelled at combat because that's what he was. And he started out as not a witch. He started out with a magic of two. And so it means he couldn't cast magic, but then uh, he ended up becoming involved and accepted into house Volva. And then their their originally it was their first branch of, or their branch of their special forces house Volva V O L V A. They're, um, uh, they're the only witch house that has a 
contingent of non-witches that are part of the house. Um, they're the special forces, you know, uh, they're called VFO, Viking Force One, which is awesome, <laughs> right? And so, uh, and they know it, they play off that. So, um, yeah, so he's that, he's, he's uh, basically turned into uh, the, the muscle, uh, the, the, the big, uh, strong protector of the group. Um, uh, and that's what he does. Uh, the and I made him because there was just the Friday night game, and then there was the that's the thirsty witch game. <laughs> we call that. Um, <laughs> I love it. And then, and then um, oh, the first half an hour of the game is spent hugging. So you know, uh, and that's <laughs> just a text game. And then we have Wednesday night, which is crime time. Wednesday night is the crime time. That's over voice, and so uh, that's our other play test. And my wife runs that as well. And in that one, I play uh, a character named Connor Johnson. Um, he's very much, I styled him after John Constantine. Um, but he himself is a personality of, um, he's the alternate ID of someone who legally died. Um, but then he, that legally dead person came up with a personality named Mr. Kaplan, um, who was an interrogator. And then he became, when that character faced their fake death um then he became uh connor johnson so connor's a personality um but because he has like mind palace and all analytic mind and all of these mental he's very very smart um he's been able to forge himself into these different like he's he's a man who broke himself apart mentally into these different pieces so um, he is a different Connor's a different personality than Mr. Kaplan. Who's a different personality than Mr. Than John West, uh, and so he's he's this uh, trifecta thing of of just um, espionage, uh, and like he's a, he's a spy. Uh, but these characters are like, uh, I think they have over three hundred experience points now, um, which is doesn't mean much if you don't understand the context. But you get thirteen XP a month, and. Uh, and so 300 and you know each that's a lot yeah that's it's, a lot it's of math lot. right it's it is a lot of math like considering um you can get uh, a trait that goes from level one to three right and a trait uh if you level level three generally gives you a really big bonus um 12 xp will get you up level one to three for that trait so all three levels so 300 xp will get you a lot of traits it also increases your skills and sub skills and attributes and things like that so there's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a lot. So they're pretty powerful. And then there's like supernatural creature traits where you can, um, if you reverse engineer uh, some Materia Magica, which is um, their articles and their things from supernatural creatures or things from different places, um, you can uh, get these things and you can reverse engineer them magically to learn the traits inherent in them. And then you can then spend experience points on them, but they're more costly. Uh, so Connor has learned... Um, He's learned to fly, <laughs> which cool. is cool. But also he's learned um, shape changing and mimicry. So he can basically become anyone. Uh, so, so yeah. That's a, it's, that's a scary it, dude right there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because he doesn't, he doesn't go for the people like the bigwigs. He'll, he'll become somebody's assistant and he'll stay in that role for a few days and get all the, the dirty scoop on them and then leave and then take that information and then blackmail them later. So that's <laughs> that's how that's how you do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but so, also, then he's learned planar travel. So that's that's a cool thing. Like he can astrally project, and he has an astral temple, and he can travel to all the different planes. And he was recently attacked by a planar worm, which are terrifying. Yeah, I'm throwing a whole bunch of cool information. It sounds, I know. Like, I'm like, it, this is so amazing. It's it's like well, we it's almost like we made it this whole world. It's kind of cool. Uh, but these planar worms are just terrifying creatures um oh let's see shape-shifting characters are such a good time you really get to put your role play oh they absolutely are uh shape-shifting characters are just a lot of fun um, yeah yeah and and when you have a, a group of people that play off well off each other like you have a really group of good players that just you know just you could play off of them so well uh me and another character do that a lot uh, and it's just fun to see because we both shape changed and we both were doing this bit and we we're convincing this one guy of this and it was just amazing when we went back and forth it was so cool <laughs> it was just a really good time and when you get those really cool experiences they're just so much fun you talk about and remember them that's what this whole thing's about right absolutely 
Yeah, so. I mean, that's why we're playing. And let's talk, too, a little bit about the the whole, uh, you know, concept of you took this character and it has this pretty in-depth and heavy backstory, right? So when you're you're in game, you're you're playing that out. You're working through all of those different emotions. And, you know, it's, it's, I use play for healing all the time. Um, and I think that's a very underused um, and underappreciated uh, skill set. You know, there's so much when we're sitting at a table with, uh, you know, this group of people and we're connecting to our character that we're stepping into, but away from ourselves, it allows us to take a step back from, you know, reality and ourselves. And you can pull back from that just enough that you can, you can kind of work through that and you can, you know, use it for good or evil because that's fun. Right. (laughs) But, but you're still processing and, and, um, I work with grief every day. And so for me, everything that I do, like that's always underlying Um, and stepping in and being able to like really just immerse into the world, it just gives you so much power. And then, like you said, you know, you've got that that connection uh, with people at your table that you're able to just kind of dive in. And then you have to add on to you know, strategic thinking that's coming in because now, now, okay, I have to figure out how I can do this thing that I want to do. And, um, and, and I love how uh, Covenant Crucible gives you so many opportunities to do that. Like you're, it, you're, you're giving them the plethora of, you know, choices. Like, it's funny because when you were talking, I was kind of like getting this vision in my head of, you know, the kid that gets all the coupons at the arcade and then you go up to the arcade and you've got all these things and you're like, okay, I have enough. I can buy this over here and I can buy that over there and I could buy six Skittles and this gobstopper, you know, like, (laughs) so it's like that, you know, you've got all of these things out here, but you have to be strategic and, and how you do it and how you put it together and combine that in. There's no wrong way. I mean, there's no wrong way to do it. You you do something that you're going to have fun with. Make something that you want to be able to say, you know, I'm good at this, but I can help other people do this too. And that's that's the game that we designed where teamwork is key. Um, anybody can do a lot of stuff, and you, even individual witches can be very, very powerful. But they, if you get a group of a circle of witches together, there's one person is not going to be able to stand up to them no. at all. Yeah. Uh, even the most powerful witch. So, and yeah, and absolutely. Like, I can't tell you, like there were, so I can, I, I can tell you actually, there were several occasions where, um, the after effects of a game just, you know, uh, just I'm crying. It's like just sobbing just cause it was re- such a good release. Um, yeah. you know, you see this, this impact that you've had. And even though it's a story and it's an NPC, it's just really, really powerful. And it's so great to be able to do that because not that I'm advocating that role playing should be therapy and I'm, that we're therapists because I'm not, but um, you can get, you can find some sense of uh, distance, distant immersion, I like to say, um, where you immerse yourself, but you are distant from it and you can view it in that standpoint. You can get a lot of that um, and just really allow yourself, like you said, to process some stuff. But, you know, again, I don't want to say that gaming is therapy and it's therapeutic for sure. And it's a lot of fun, but it shouldn't replace it, you know. But No, it's just, yeah, it's another tool. And and, uh, just just for the record, I am a certified personal coach and I do use art. That's awesome. Yeah, and I do use art and play. Um, It's it's not therapy. Uh, It is another tool and they all work differently. Uh, I suggest utilizing whatever you feel called to use, uh, you know, when, when you need it. Uh, I do both, but, uh, but yeah, I think just, it's so empowering to be able to kind of step outside yourself for a little bit and take on this other persona. Um, And it's just freaking fun. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It absolutely is. Yeah, it's just fun. Um, so we're gonna, I figured we'd wrap up. And then okay. bef- uh, before we do that, though, oh, wait, we've got some from Nate. Sometimes TTRPGs find a way to call you out. Yes, exactly. The amount of times I've been 10 sessions deep as a character only to realize how one-to-one they represent something in my life that needs a dressing and an outlet. Exactly. <laughs> and that's how I use it. I'm actually writing a TTRPG to do that specifically. Like, um, 
and I'm pagan as well. So all of this witch talk, I'm just like, uh-huh, yeah, up a cup and it's more powerful. <laughs> yep, uh-huh, you know. But um, but to specifically go in and intentionally work on those things, those shadowy, I call them shadowy bits, um, you know, where you're choosing to face them because it is it is a choice, you know, and it is difficult yeah. to do. Um, but I, I think gaming is so, so great in that because – like you said, Nate, it's you're you're doing it, but you're not really realizing you're doing it. And then when it starts to happen, you're like, oh, and then you start to, you know, you can face it. You can work on it and you can ask some questions. You can dive deep or you can escape or, you know, and escapism is also a very, very important tool. You know, sometimes you just need to not think about life and jump in and be a superhero that can fly. And, you know, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So before we uh, wrap up, uh, remind people, um, and actually, if there's any, oh, we've got one for Joe. A bunch of my characters were some of my character flaws. Yes, exactly. Imposter yep. syndrome was the primary one. I love that, Joe. That's amazing. And that's intentionally, you know, so that's using a tool to intentionally work on yourself. It's all about personal growth, right? It's working through those little things. Um, and and deciding how you want to do it. And gaming is such a good way to do it. Uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, remind us, I should say, a little bit about uh, where they can find you, but also uh, do a, a little bit about this fabulous fitness thing, this walk to Mordor that, uh, right, that, that, I, that I am doing as well. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so, yeah, so you can find me on threads at Bald Beastie. Um, you can find me Instagram at Bald Beastie. You can, I don't do the Book of Faces much. Um, that's mainly for my family stuff. Uh, but then I've got, we got 13th Moon Games on Instagram, which is 13th Moon Games on Instagram. Um, our book is on Drive-Thru RPG. If you look up 13th Moon Games or Covenant Crucible. Um, our website, 13thmoongames.com. Yep, just like that. Thank you. Um, you know, you can in any of those places. Uh, our website, okay, we're not website developers. <laughs> we are apparently <laughs> a writers, okay, and artists. We, I, uh, so our website is bare bones, uh, but it's there. It's present because we needed to have one. Uh, but yeah, you can find uh, all that information, and, and I'm happy to help direct if you want to reach out. Um, the Discord currently is limited to only backers and uh, Patreon supporters who are playing the game. Um, however, uh, it is always a, an active add-on, I believe, uh, on any Kickstarter that we do. So you can get access to Discord. So you can see what our updates are. We post um, things about the game. Um, you know, they, where they have access, they can see some of the things that happen in the game. Uh, so it's, you know, it is, uh, it's there. And that's how in, in questions, they, if they have questions about mechanics, if they're running their own game, um, they can ask questions that way. So there's a whole bunch of stuff there. You can find us. Um, and again, uh, you know, just look for the bald golden retriever on threads saying you can do it. And that's me. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I, I try to, I try to be as positive as possible. I try to help out as much people as possible. Just living through love and gratitude and acknowledging that everyone, look, our candle doesn't shine any brighter if we blow out somebody else's. But if you get a whole bunch of candles together, that's pretty bright, right? So, yeah. So that's um, that's my belief, and that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, and just trying to educate myself, redefine masculinity, um, you know, redefine how I look at racism, how I look, how I am inherently racist, just because of my privilege of growing up uh, white and growing up uh, in mid the Midwest. So recognizing a lot of those things and changing the viewpoint of myself and anyone who will listen, really. So that's me. And then fitness, the Fellowship of Fitness, that's going to be on threads. Hashtag Fellowship of Fitness. Um, all one word. Uh, if you do that, you'll be able to see the updates from everybody. Uh, it was, and when I did, when I first started, it was so cool because uh, there wasn't any posts with it. So I got to create that hashtag just for this, which was really awesome. So hopefully, yeah, Fellowship of Fitness. Perfect. So that's it. I was it. like, that's I hope I spelled that right. <laughs> I, I was going through to make sure, yes. So awesome. 
Thank you so much for having me on here. It was such a blast. Uh, and I love all the work that you do in the, the Discord server and how positive. It's just uplifting. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate that. It's uh, it's uh, same same as you. It's, you know, want to lift people up, uh, live from a place of gratitude and, and just, you know, try to do what we can to find a little bit more joy in the world and yeah, yeah. create play and heal that's that's what we're yes. trying to do here create play and heal we'll lift each other up awesome. as yeah as we do it so um and you can find all of uh all of my uh links at imagineif.shop i-m-a-g-i-n-i-f dot s-h-o-p um you'll see what i'm up to and what streams i'm on and all that kind of stuff but we uh we really appreciate y'all hanging out Thank you.